Marvin Lewis leaving Cincinnati. Um, I think he's going year. somewhere else. I think he's going somewhere else. But I got this funny feeling that old Tommy Coughlin wants one more shot at it. He's 147 years old, but on TV the other night when he was inducted into the Ring of Honor uh, in East Rutherford, New Jersey, for the New York Football Giants, Tom Coughlin expressed interest in, in wanting to be back down on the sidelines. And I think he had just run out of time in New York, done a lot, accomplished enough to put him in a Hall of Fame head coach. So you think he goes back to Jacksonville? I, I mean, do. he was there. I think I think so. I think that's where he got his NFL start as a head coach. Uh, he went to an AFC Championship game there with Mark Brunel. Yeah, I do. I think he goes back to Jacksonville. Now, if I'm the Jacksonville Jaguars, I would have serious issues with hiring a 70-plus-year-old man. I would have serious issues with that. You're a team that needs yeah, to Yeah, I was going to uh, you're, you're gonna have this. You're going to have the same uh, concerns that America had of putting John McCain in as, in as president. That's so right. You wonder, but, yeah, you wonder uh, you're going to put him in. We're going to put him in there, and he's going to keel over. Yeah, what's your four-year plan? Don't die. Die, right? I got gotcha. you. I don't know. I, I just and Maybe it just looks sexy that Tom Coughlin goes back there for one last hurrah in Jacksonville. It's probably not realistic. If you're Shad Khan there, the owner of the Jaguars, I, I think you reach out for Marvin Lewis if he's, if he's available. I also can see Mike Brown in Cincinnati not telling Marvin Lewis to, to hit the high road. Said too bad. If they miss, yeah. If they miss, if they miss the playoffs, I mean they're they're going to miss the playoffs they're this out, year. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I, I really, they will. Marvin Lewis, they will give him, however, the respect of finishing the season. They will not fire this man. That's with right. Three, four, three weeks to go. They'll give him that respect. That Let him right. finish he out. Deserves every bit of that. Yeah, he does. Yeah. There's no point. I don't even like. I don't even. I mean, I get I, the Rams in their situation. That was such an embarrassing loss that they had last last Sunday. And the, yeah. and the fact that Jeff everybody's been calling for Jeff Fisher's job and pointing the fingers, media analysts, everybody, you name it, like just shrugging their shoulders, pointing the finger, like why the hell is this guy still here? And that was that's all the reason they needed to say, okay, let's get rid of him now. Because I don't know, that was at, at home in your new stadium, in your new city. You're supposed to try to get these fans to come out to your games and give them a product that, hey, maybe, these, maybe people in L.A., you know, because this isn't St. Louis. This is L.A. where people – you know they'll lose. They'll they'll forget about you in a second. Where they're like, well, I live in L.A. I don't need. I don't need, that. I don't need well, this. On top of that, there's a good. There's a potential possibility that you're going to be sharing a stadium with the soon-to-be Los Angeles Chargers. You put two teams in that stadium, and one of them gets throttled like that at home. Embarrassed. Fans are going to turn up real quick and be and be Charger fans before they're going to be Rams fans. And I got to tell you another problem. This is where I feel bad for Jeff Fisher, and I do. I feel for my like Jeff Fisher. Uh, for the longest time preseason and into this season, Jeff Fisher made it abundantly clear that this quarterback's not ready. Our number one overall pick that we traded down to get is not ready. That can't go on anymore in the NFL. That can't go on. You have guys like, okay, Derek Carr's taking him fifth, sixth in the second round and starts. Jameis Winston, number one overall, starts day one. Marcus Mariota, number two overall, starts day one. Carson Wentz, number two overall, finds a way to start day one at the beginning of this season. Doug Peterson was laying it on the line that we're not even going to address Carson Wentz, and as it progressed, he started to recognize, trade Sam Bradford, this kid's our best shot. When Jeff Fisher looked at Jared Goff, he probably rolled his mustache and went, oh, no. No, no, no. And he did as long as he could to keep that kid off the field and stop him from starting. And I think Jeff Fisher did that to protect Jared Goff. Goff this guy looks, he looks he looks great look Saturday that? night uh, roll, rolling the Colorado Buffaloes, but does not, does not in the NFL. It doesn't work. And it's a different game. Did you happen to see any of that game Sunday? Rams Falcons? Oh no 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 no! Not 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 when my man Aaron Rodgers is out there being Aaron Rodgers and flinging the football over the place. You think I'm paying that any mind? We're, we're going to get to that. Uh, but watching Jared Goff, I don't know if you were ever in a swimming pool as a kid playing catch uh, with a Nerf football and you stuck it underneath the water and you squeezed it, and the Nerf would pretty much inhale like a liver. It would just it becomes like a shot, ball. like a shot put. Yeah, and it's like a shot put. You try to throw it, you'll hurt your elbow. Uh, Jared Goff was throwing shot puts on Sunday. 
nothing on the ball. Uh, a lot of his throws, there was hesitation. He didn't trust his reads. He was throwing interceptions because he knew midway through his action that he was making the wrong decision. They have no weapons to help him out. If I'm Todd Gurley, I want out of there. I want out of there in the worst way. Not going to happen. Jared no, Goff, no, it's not that point. easy. I feel bad for Fisher. He was never going to win with Jared Goff. I mean, come on, dude. When, when Case Keenum is starting over you, how bad is it? Mm. It's bad. Really bad. It's really, but really, really, really bad. Considering now if he's a late second-round pick and you just don't want to get the kid hurt, maybe. But when you draft Case a kid who's like, number one. Or, Case Keenum is like no, eating dog food because there's nothing else left. Number one overall pick. Yeah, it's bad. It's just a really, it's a really bad look. It's just a poorly, poorly run organization at this juncture. Yeah, it sucks. And you know what sucks, too, is we have some really great listeners out there. Um, there are lady friends that are out in the great Northwest, uh, and they are excellent uh, listeners and contributors. They always got something to say, and it's always wonderful to hear from them. Uh, but <laughs> they're a Jared Goff fan out there, uh, and I, I really wish that for her sake, Goff would be uh, – will we'll find a way to somehow become a good NFL player, and maybe he will. But from what I see right now, this is just – it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. He needs to sit he and, did, and 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 Jared, in Jared Goff's defense – I will say the one thing I can give the kid is he has absolutely nothing to work with. Nothing. He has nothing. Who's his best receiver? I don't even know. Ah, there isn't a good – probably Kenny Britt. <laughs> right. I mean, you have Kenny Britt, yeah. Brian Quick. Uh, it's like you're trying, you're trying to build a house and your best tool you have at your disposal is a screwdriver. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's just not something that's going to work out in Los Angeles. It wasn't going to work out with Jeff Fisher. So they move on. It remains to be seen who these replacements are. Fisher is the first coach uh, whose head has rolled in the NFL for the 2016 season. There, there will be others. I do firm believe Gus Bradley is next, probably Rex Ryan somewhere down the line. Guys like Jim Caldwell have, I've told you for a long time, Caldwell has solidified that job. He is fine there. Uh, Speaking of that division... Yeah, that team's 9-4. and four. He's not going anywhere. No, he's not. But, he, but at the beginning of this season, people were shaking their head and going, oh, Jim Caldwell, that situation, that's bad. They played their ass off for him last year for a reason. The guy can coach. Um, but speaking of that division, they got NFC North. A few weeks ago, everybody was writing off the Green Bay Packers. They were writing off Aaron Rodgers. You mentioned something um, sarcastically that Aaron Rodgers may be in decline. <laughs> that yeah, not so much. is some of the funniest shit I've ever heard. He's in decline, and then you watched him that Sunday night against Seattle. Was it? No, not Sunday night against Seattle. Who did he light up a couple weeks ago? It doesn't matter. Uh, They've, been uh, red he lit. They've been hot. They've well, even been, here, even, even the games they were losing, Tennessee, they get blown out, Tennessee and Washington, he's still, put, he's still lighting the scoreboard up. Their defense just can't stop anybody. And Sunday, he punched Seattle right in the mouth on one And that's leg. a good defense. Earl, no Earl Thomas or not, that's a, good, that's a really good defense. Yeah, it is a good defense. I, they do miss Earl Thomas in that secondary, though. Of course that, they do. That, that of course they do. Is, yeah, that's a big but, difference. They miss him. Yeah, but it's not like, I mean, now, it, there would be, Aaron Rodgers lit you up. Now, is there... In, on the you know at in Lambeau Field now if um if you'd gone out there and like a guy like Sam Bradford lit you up then you're like okay we really miss Earl Thomas he must have been Sam everything Bradford can't light the grill no he can't he cannot no, no I, I, Rod- I even do you one better he can't even light the birthday cake no that's right <laughs> but Aaron Rodgers was just smooth and smoking on Sunday that team is back they're seven and six. They're going to make a charge. I'm telling you, Detroit's got a brutal schedule coming up. And 9-4, and four, I don't know that Detroit's going to get out of their schedule with three wins. Interesting matchup down the road. January 1st, Green Bay and, Green Bay and Detroit Janu- on January the 1st. Yeah, I don't know. That, that, could, be, that could be for the division. Uh, uh, yeah, it Packers, probably could be. It probably I'm could basing be it on who the Lions – you're right. The Lions do have it brutal. I'm basing who they have coming up in their schedule as, as opposed Giants, to the, the Packers Cowboys have. Pack- yeah. The, yeah, the Packers have uh, – who do they have? The Packers have the Bears next week. That's a win. Um, uh, uh, yes, sir. It, it's a win. It be. And they have Minnesota at home. Not in Minnesota, but at home. 
Yeah. So, and mm-hmm. Minnesota's Minnesota's been in much decline. No offense. To, you know, the Green Bay's glaring weakness is their defense, and it still is. But Minnesota has no offense to speak of, especially with no Adrian Peterson. Uh, no, and I think Green Bay's cleaned up a lot of issues defensively. They're still not great. There's no no question to that. Uh, but they've got a little bit of a running game. Seattle Seattle's biggest problem nowadays is people are asking what's wrong with Russell Wilson. Here's here's what's uh, here's what's wrong with Russell Wilson. No Marshawn Lynch. It, it, you, yeah. You're starting uh, to find out how valuable that guy was. Well, you're finding out too that Seattle's not a very good team on the road. No, they're, they're not, but. but Outside of Quest Field, that team's not dominant. That defense is not dominant. You take Earl Thomas off the field, that makes a big difference. But when they drag their ass down here to Tampa, they got embarrassed. That offense scored five points. Now, I think the Buccaneers' defense is likely for real. That they got a front four that, that is getting a lot of pressure. Uh, four-man pressure is win in the NFL. That is, that is the recipe for success in the NFL. If you can get pressure with your four up front, you want to win games, get pressure with the four up front. I know I sound like a broken record, but it makes sense. Uh, but Seattle, outside of Quest, is not that good of a football team. They go home. They're tough to beat. They embarrassed the Carolina Panthers team that couldn't – they couldn't have been less interested about being there uh, two Sundays ago. Hmm. And we I, on, the, on the Saturday pick and pod, we smelled that. We knew that was going to be an ass thumping. Uh, yeah, it was it. That line was set up for that, and it was just it just everything. Yeah, every, going Carolina going all the way across the country. Yeah, they're not um, they're interested. Just, yeah, uninterested nah. as it gets. Uh, but the NFC is shaping up kind of funny. I think Green Bay does win the North. I really do. Uh, and then eventually we're going to have to go back and we're going to look at some of our preseason predictions about who we had winning what. Uh, I know. I mean, uh, I'm all. I was all Arizona Cardinals, Carolina Panthers. I was way off when it came to the NFC. Yeah, the NFC is still, uh, I think, still tough to decide. I'm not well, yeah, because what, what we saw, yeah, no, we saw we saw something in the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, I mean, okay, it's a division game on the road. Okay, it's it's you had a you, you know you it's okay, but you saw some things with Dak Prescott. They're like, okay, there's the rookie in you because the Giants put one thing the Giants are uh, really pretty good at doing is putting um. It's putting it's putting pressure on you. They got to that kid. And he looked rattled at times. They did. I, I really think I think you're 100 percent right. They absolutely got to him. They made him look like what he is a rookie. A rookie. And now, now all of a sudden you just gotta you gotta love the media. You gotta love the NFL. It's <laughs> the best drama on just best drama show on TV. Now now everybody out there calling for Tony Romo. Imagine that. Yeah, that, that shit's funny too. It it is. I don't know that I can, I, you know, I don't know how I feel about that. But I'll tell you what, I think that game against the Giants on Sunday night, I think Tony Romo wins that game. My aunt had balls, she'd be with my uncle, but. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah right. again, I'd be weird. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know. Like I said, my point being is it's tough, it's tough to say, but. You can't. You gotta help. A, you can't help but wonder because the Cowboys were in position to win that game. Yeah, I think so. I think that they look Detroit. Detroit. Uh, New York scored on one play. It was one play. Odell Beckham yeah. does what he does best. They got him out. He got loose. He gave him a chance to make a play. The dog got he, off the chain. And, he got uh, loose, and really, that was the highlight of that game. It was not a very. I mean, that game kind of. As much as you know, that game was built up, and you know. You know, being the both teams' record, it was yeah, it was a stinker of a game. Yeah, it was. It was a pitcher's duel. Um, I enjoyed it. I watched it. I liked it. I just don't think that the Dallas Cowboys are going very far with Dak Prescott unless they can protect him. If you get him on his ass with that Giants front four, though, that's a team that's been great. No Jason Pierre-Paul or not. Uh, that Olivier Vernon was a really nice addition. He wreaks havoc. Uh, good front four is going to win you some games in that. Without Zeke Elliott, I don't know that Dallas is, is, is a 10-win 10, 10 team. You can't tell me Des Bryant adds to a game. The not reason, Des not Bryant be, add? Definitely not these past two games. I mean, two years for that matter, sorry. Nope. Not, these, not these past two years. The X factor has really, uh, really kind of become the non-factor, dare I say. Injured most of all last year and this year, other than maybe a couple games, has really you know, not made a whole lot, a lot of noise. No, he hasn't. He hasn't, and it's been uh, 
disappointing for fantasy owners. 